and I know you had something. This is we're going across the pond for this. Right. One. What yes. do you got? So I, I was reading on Boxing Scene uh, yesterday over the weekend that Eddie Hearn said that he regrets not signing Tyson Fury when he had the opportunity. Yes. And as I read the story, I, I knew in my mind when he was refer referring to, but uh, I had to read through to confirm that, in fact, it was Monaco. And mm -hmm. I'm thinking it was 2018. Um, Feels I, right. But it would have been while well, I was there. So it was, it was, it was November 2018. Uh, we were in Monaco. Um, Dimitri Bevel was fighting Trent Broadhurst on HBO in the main event. WBA uh, light heavyweight championship. And it was, um, you know, it was just a, a small group of people that were staying at the hotel. It was the fighters, fight camps, match room, and Tyson Fury was there. And he was there. Uh, he doesn't look anything like the Tyson Fury that we see today. Mm -hmm. um, he was quite large, quite out of shape. Uh, I had talked to him a lot during that week. Uh, and he was expressing that he was uh, getting back in shape, that he was going to train, that he was going to compete, that he was going to win the heavyweight title again. And, and that was when a lot of people were calling him out too. Uh, yeah. and, and he was talking to me about it. And I remember because he was telling me that, you know, Shannon Briggs is calling him out. All these people were calling him out. They, they thought that he was sort of finished and kind of in no man's land. But I guess what I have to say is... I don't think that Eddie, you know, I know in hindsight he regrets it, but I don't know how much of a push he was making to sign him because at the time I think that there was a big question mark as mm -hmm. far as, you know, will Tyson Fury really come back? Will he really put his demons behind him? You know, will he get back in top form and would he be able to compete and win the heavyweight title? So, you know, I, I know Eddie regrets it. What I'm saying is I don't know how much of a realistic scenario it actually really was. Hmm. Uh, that, that's interesting. And I, obviously I'm going to have something to say about that and the championship rounds, but I did want to go ahead and show this is, I believe this is the time period. That's that you're it. Referring that's to. in Monaco. Uh, yeah. In Monaco, you can see there's a, uh, um, uh, there's a poster back there. Uh, it says uh, Casino de Monaco. So this is, it was in uh, 2017. Ah, okay, 2017. October yeah. 2017. So that is, uh, yeah, you can tell uh, this is not the Tyson Fury from a physical shape <laughs> standpoint that we see that we're seeing now. Uh, so you know, he he, like you said, he he regrets not signing him. I have a take on that. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I clearly what he's talking about is right now if he had Tyson Fury. Um, Deontay Wilder would be on the outside looking in and it would be all about Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. And he'd have essentially control of the two biggest, you know, British, uh, or, uh, fighter, uh, two biggest heavyweights from the, from the UK, uh, with the biggest name, the biggest draw, uh, the Wembley stadium thing might've already happened twice by now. Uh, right. and the payday that would have come off of that would have been insane. And then they would still have an opportunity to do a third fight if they wanted and they would have all and they would control all of the cards in terms of Deontay Wilder because if you think about it Deontay was gaining obviously popularity and he was a significant presence in boxing and in uh, obviously in the heavyweight division but the draw with Tyson Fury took Deontay Wilder's star level to another to another place it took him to another place from a notoriety standpoint. That was a huge fight. And that was the first really huge fight he'd been in. And so without him, so if you take Tyson Fury out of his stratosphere and he hasn't fought Tyson Fury, he's only fought the likes of Dominic, Bra well, he hadn't even fought Brazil yet, but he's only fought the like, you know, Johan Duapa and these different fighters that he's fought, uh, Luis Ortiz. I don't know that Wilder's star level is at the same place. Instead, that entire situation is in the UK with Eddie Hearn in the in the scenario that he's talking about. So I so I certainly understand as a as someone who follows boxing and loves the sport, I'm glad <laughs> that he's not <laughs> with Eddie because I I don't know what kinds of fights we would have been seeing. Uh I think that 
obviously Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua is a, is a potentially interesting fight, but I don't think it's quite as interesting as the two fights against Deontay Wilder. I think the style, the differences between those two guys made for two more interesting fights, even though the second one was completely lopsided. Uh, the first one was a very good fight, and I don't know if we would have ever seen a fight that good between those two. Right. And, and now I hear what you're saying. I mean, it makes perfect sense. But remember, what Eddie was saying was that he regrets not signing him when he had For the sure. chance. For sure. For sure. And I'm not sure. What I'm saying is I you don't even sure. know if he really had the chance. That's ah, got what you. I, you understand. What I'm saying is I was there and I remember right. the vibe. Yeah. And I, I don't believe so. that Tyson Fury was even there to meet with Eddie. Right. Um, and I forget the reason why he he might have been there to support Anthony Crolla. I don't know. There was someone else on that card on the Bevel Broadhurst card. So there was so, someone else on that card. So and essentially, you're saying that perhaps Eddie could be embellishing an opportunity that he had or embellishing a situation and situation and making it sound as though there was an opportunity then well period. i don't even but, know if he's embellishing what i'm thinking is that maybe he's thinking man i should have put my foot on the gas pedal in monaco and maybe i should have made a real effort other than maybe maybe he made a casual effort maybe right he, maybe he was there for uh to he could have been for chisora it could have been chisora was on that chisora lost that night yeah he lost uh, to the turkish heavyweight to the turkish yeah. heavyweight yeah so it was a pretty good card um scott quig was on that card. oh it was quig not crawler quig yeah. that yeah. that's i'm sorry so which i think that ended like in a no contest or maybe like a uh, i don't know quig won by tko and also jamie oh. mcdonald jamie mcdonald was on that card point i'm making is that is that eddie might have felt like maybe he was too casual Mm -hmm. having him right there mm -hmm. and not taking advantage of really putting the full court press because look honestly it would have been hard you saw the picture of me and fury yeah he didn't look like a guy that was getting ready to fight and and really still be the only undefeated heavyweight in the world right now yeah you, you know what i mean like he did you have to be honest with yourself. He just didn't look like that guy. Even even his mannerisms that whole week, he just was just hanging out. Yes. And so what I'm what, all I'm saying is that I, I I know Eddie says he regrets having not signed him. And all I was saying is like I don't even know if that was ever really a reality or it may be Eddie just regrets that he wasn't more aggressive. I mean we've all we've all had those feelings in this game of. Man, I wish I would have put on a, a more of an effort to sign somebody. Yeah, it's almost like you 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 go in a room with this um, with a woman, and you're looking like, man, I wish, I really wish I had a, married her when I had a chance. But right. in reality, she wasn't interested. <laughs> well, possibly, but what, what I'm saying is, if anybody wasn't potentially interested at, interested in earnest at that time, you know that that would have been right. like getting a stock at its lowest point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because yeah. so many question marks still. Yeah, it was a lot going on. It was a lot going on. He did not look like he looked like a cautionary tale. He didn't look like a future champion. And remember, his comeback fights were like what? Uh, Huey Fury? Oh no, what am I saying? No. Huey Fury? I meant um, uh, his comeback fight was. Oh my god! Um, I don't know geez. why I said that. What was? Oh my god! I, I'm I'm. But they they I'm were not placing it right now. Uh, <laughs> when he came back. Uh, his first fight after Klitschko basically was Safari Safari. Right, right. And then he fought Francesco Pianetta. And then it was Deontay right. Wilder. Right. So, you know, who knows what, what, you know, I don't think that would have been the same path under Matchroom's banner. He had been out of the ring for almost three years, man. Since beating Klitschko. Yep. Which, interestingly enough, I mean, him and Joshua do have that common opponent. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I mean, I, there's no question Fury Joshua needs to happen at some point. It does. It needs to happen. I, I think uh, it will happen. I, I'm almost positive it will happen. There's no way it will. And, no and, and, will and you know, with all this time off and, and, and the third fight, you know, pending for 
Fury and Wilder, who knows? I mean, it might happen even before Fury and Wilder know. three. I don't know. Yeah, who, so who you knows? never know. It's a possibility. It's a possibility, and I, uh, I'll, I'll love to watch it if it happens. But I am still glad that Fury's in a different. The only way that fight happens, of course, is if Wilder gives permission, as long as he's granted to yes. be the one that fights the winner. Step aside, money. Yeah, right. Isn't that what you're talking about? Yep. Yep. I just wanted to make sure we we're on the same page. Listen, you know what you're talking about. Come hey, on. Hey, you know, I just want to make sure we're on the same page, man.